A good stand mixer is essential for serious home bakers. It should be able to do both big and small tasks, from whipping just two egg whites to kneading big double batches of dough. But deciding which to buy has never been more complicated. We bought a bunch of stand mixers across a wide range of prices, from just around $100 all the way up to about $750. We did a full range of common stand mixer tasks with each one, focusing on each of the three main tools that come with a stand mixer, the whisk, the paddle, and the dough hook. We also asked a variety of testers of varying skill levels to try the mixers and give us their feedback on how easy they were to use. Some of these were way more complicated than they needed to be. And as always, we hand washed all of the parts after every test. With the whisk attachments, we whipped just two egg whites to stiff peaks to see if the mixers could handle such small volume. In these fairly lightweight whipping tasks, most of the mixers did just fine. Next, we tested the mixers using their paddles or beaters. We creamed butter and sugar for cookie dough, and we reverse creamed butter into dry ingredients for cake batter. Now again, most of the mixers could handle these jobs, but a few left ingredients lining the sides and bottom of the bowl. This made us stop and scrape the bowl a lot more than with better, more effective mixers. Finally, we got into the heavy duty stuff. We used the dough hooks on each machine to make the kinds of breads you really need a stand mixer for. And here's where we saw the big differences in the quality and power of the machines. Mixing power. Wattage seems like the answer, but it's actually deceptive, according to the experts we spoke with. The true measure is torque. That's the rotational force, how powerfully that motor pushes batter or dough around the bowl. If you think about hand mixers, those little beaters rotate quickly, but they can't budge stiff dough because hand mixers lack torque. So why don't all stand mixers have plenty of torque? It would make them much more expensive, bigger, and heavier. An underpowered mixer doesn't just deliver undermixed dough though. When it slows or it stalls, that strain makes the motor much more likely to burn out. Some mixers visibly struggled, while other ones stayed cooler, quieter, and steadier. If you plan to do heavy duty kneading, this is an important consideration. Consider if the mixer has time or speed limits. We recently learned that KitchenAid has placed time and speed limits on all of its stand mixers for kneading. Don't exceed speed two when kneading dough with the dough hook. Don't knead for more than two minutes at a time. And the total mixing and kneading time shouldn't exceed four to six minutes. Now many dough recipes call for much longer kneading times and higher speeds. While we didn't experience problems kneading longer in this testing, KitchenAid says that exceeding these speed and time limits will damage the mixer and void the warranty. So if you need a lot of dough in a stand mixer, you might wanna skip KitchenAid altogether. So here are some other factors to consider when you're shopping for a stand mixer. The style, tilt head versus bowl lift. On tilt head models, the entire horizontal top of the mixer lifts up from the bowl. Bowl lift models just use a crank to raise and lower the bowl. Tilt head mixers have to be made smaller and less powerful. They tend to max out at a five quart size. You also need a lot of clearance to lift the head. The plus, it's easier to get at the bowl because the top lifts out of the way. Bowl lift models are bigger and more powerful. Their size ranges from five to eight quarts. They don't need any additional space overhead because only the bowl moves up and down. But it is harder to get at the bowl's contents. And these days there's another mixer design to consider. The motor's in the base and the bowl's on top. That offers excellent access to ingredients. It's featured in European mixers like the Ankeshroom. Heavier weight matters. In our years of testing, we found that heavier stand mixers rock and walk less during heavy duty mixing. The motor power is going to moving the dough, not the machine. Now, if you need a very light mixer, suction feet are great. They anchor it to your countertop. Otherwise, skip mixers that come with suction feet. And then when the suction cups got floury, they lost grip and mixers just skated away. We measured each mixer bowl's usable capacity. Now these are all sold as five quart or seven quart machines, but that would only apply if you filled the bowl all the way up to the top rim. That stated capacity in the name may not only be misleading, but it's not a good indication of its ability to handle large loads. For a rough estimate, subtract about two quarts from any stated capacity. We also found that mixers with a stated capacity of four and a half to five quarts, which actually held about three quarts, could tackle double batches of dough, but anything smaller could not. 
Now we really liked uncoated stainless steel whisks, paddles, and hooks. Steel is non-reactive and it's durable. Coated aluminum parts often chip over time and we'd really rather not find bits in our baked goods. Uncoated aluminum tools oxidize if they're left wet, particularly if you put them in the dishwasher. And they form a grayish residue that comes off in food. Plastic parts are lighter and easier to handle, but when important pieces, like the hub to attach a whisk, are thin plastic, we've got to worry about durability. At the end of all this testing, we had a range of recommendations that will suit any home baker. If you want a mixer that can literally handle everything, and especially a lot of heavy-duty bread and pizza doughs, we suggest investing in the Akashroom Original. For solid performance at a moderate price, we suggest the KitchenAid Classic Series 4.5 quart stand mixer. If space constraints are a concern, consider the Petite KitchenAid Artisan Mini 3.5 quart. If you're on a tight budget, we recommend the Farberware 6 speed, which was slightly underpowered on tough doughs, but otherwise performed really well at a fraction of the price of the other mixers. We hope that we've helped you choose the stand mixer that's right for you. For more details on this and other equipment reviews, check out americastestkitchen.com.